Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and we have a Prince Andrew update. All right, our buddy Prince Andrew has been the hot topic lately. He has been in the news and broiled in the battle for his life, literally, after it's been exposed that there are more holes in his story than Swiss cheese. This guy has told all sorts of fabrications, it seems like. And we have some news that's coming out in the Daily Mail about another Victoria's Secret model and a think tank director. Hmm, I wonder what think tank this person works for. I guarantee it's one of these shysty ones that you hear about all the time because that's all the kind of people that Jeffrey Epstein surrounded himself with. Other shysters, other scum, right? Anyone who's hanging out with this guy, especially after the conviction, is legitimately scum in my opinion. So before we get into the article... If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That is B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. And yeah, let's see what this article has to say. Exclusive. Victoria's Secret model and think tank director were among revolving door of visitors during Prince Andrew's fateful weekend stay at Jeffrey Epstein's mansion. All right, let us see. A director for the Council on Foreign Relations... Right there. The first sentence. A director for the Council on Foreign Relations... Oh, that's nice. The the Council of the CFR. They're involved in all sorts of shady stuff, aren't they? How come it seems like Jeffrey Epstein has all these friends in all, all these high government places? How was that even possible? Who introduced him to all of these high government officials? All of these bureaucrats? All of these deep state rats? Because... Make no mistake, that's what these people are. Lifelong, deep state rats who all they care about is the consolidation of power. They don't even care who the president is. The president's in for four or eight years and they're gone. These people are lifers. And what they do once they're in power is all they want to do is, is, is further their narrative. That's all they want to do. They don't care about the country. They don't care about you. They don't care about me. They, can, they care about the consolidation of power and moving along whatever agenda these sick bastards are running at the time. A director for the Council on Foreign Relations and a Victoria's Secret model were among the revolving door of visitors during Prince Andrew's fateful weekend stay at the mansion of convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. DailyMail.com can exclusively reveal... Valerie Brazil Post and Lana Zacocella are among a number of potential witnesses who were present at the time and who could help the ongoing FBI probe into the billionaire's activities. Okay, so these people were there. They need to be subpoenaed. They need to be questioned. They need to be talked to at the very least, right? So we have the media in, in the UK going bonkers on this story. They're uncovering all sorts of stuff right now, while the media in America is still so busy trying to force feed these this, this ridiculous hearing down your throat. All right, look, let's be real. We're less than a year out from the election. Do we really need this stupid show trial? Let the people decide in 2020, and that's that. Unless you have legitimate, hardcore proof and evidence, all you're doing is hurting your chances of ever making anything stick on this guy. So tr- just tread lightly, right? And enough. The media, the media needs to pivot away. I mean, cover that. Of course, that needs to be covered. It's it's going on. It needs to be covered. But how about spending some time listening to some of these victims? How about spending some time running some of their stories? No, ABC instead squashes it, and then he goes on and continues to molest girls. It's absolutely mind-boggling. In his Car Crash Newsnight interview last week, Prince Andrew likened the $75 million property to a railway station on account of the sheer volume of visitors. Hmm, so that means there's tons of witnesses, right? Names. We need names. Until now, the Royals' five-day New York sojourn in December 2010 that provoked, that proved key to his downfall this week has largely been shrouded in secrecy. His Royal Highness trip took place 17 months after Epstein's release from jail for child sex offenses. Because, you know, guys, come on. He had to come over here and break up with Jeffrey Epstein. He had to break off their friendship in public because he's an, I mean, in person, because he's an honorable man. All right. And it would be unbecoming for him to just end his relationship with a pedophile. Prince Andrew claimed he never saw anything there which aroused his suspicion. Oh, that's a funny word. Aroused his suspicions, huh? Okay. Although there were six women and three men photographed entering and leaving during his stay who could corroborate or disprove his account. 
Brazil Post was seen leaving Epstein's 71st Street townhouse on the Upper East Side at 3.35 p.m. on Monday, December 6th. The 55-year-old has been the director of events at the Council on Foreign Relations, a prestigious, nonpartisan, yeah, okay, think tank on foreign policy for two decades, according to LinkedIn. Let that settle in, folks, okay? You have a director for the Council on Foreign Relations, a think tank on foreign policy. Oh, sounds like intelligence, hmm? Hmm, intelligence, it sounds. And she's at his house after he was convicted of child molestation. I wonder why. I wonder why. Members of the organization include former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice and Colin Powell, Angelina Jolie, David Rockefeller, and Robert Rubin, Secretary of Treasury under Bill Clinton. Eh, great. Uh, uh, who's who of war criminals and neocons and neoliberals. Perfect. Our kinds of, uh, my kind of people, right? Just the kind of people we like. She is married to Joel S. Post, first vice president of wealth management for UBS. Oh, makes sense now. It all, it's all coming into focus now. Brazil Post told Daily Mail today that she had visited Epstein's home for a luncheon where a Nobel Prize winning scientist was speaking but declined to name him. So you're declining to name him, huh? Again, you, so you're covering for people? You're a real hell of a lady there, miss. She told Daily Mail, it was just a luncheon with a scientist that was there speaking about something that I was very interest, interested in, that I'm involved in, that I'm involved in the field of. It was a Nobel Prize winning scientist, and there were a number of people that went to hear him speak. Oh, okay. Okay. So, didn't Virginia Roberts say that several academic, she was passed off to several academics as well? Could this be one of them? I don't know. I, who knows? I'm just asking questions here, folks. Questions need to be asked. Questions need to be answered. When asked if Mr. I, when asked if Prince Andrew was present at the lunch, Miss Brazil Post asked to be called back and hung up. She did not respond to further messages seeking comment. So here you go, here you go, Miss Brazil Post, member of the count the uh, Council on Foreign Relations. You're an enabler, and now and now you're on the radar. All right, you and your the rest of your sick warhawk military criminal buddies on the CFR, you're all a bunch of deranged and disturbed individuals. Epstein was a member on, of the Council on Foreign Relations for 15 years, from 1995 until 2009, and gave the organization $350,000 over a decade of membership as a top donor, the Washington Post reported in September. So chew on that, huh? The circle continues. They take care of him by protecting his operation and setting him up for this blackmail situation so he could provide them with information. They set him on this Council for Foreign Relations. Oh, but remember, we're going to put you on this CFR, but we're going to need you to funnel some of that loot back into it. You got me, pal? Oh, these people are all so corrupt. It's, they're all so corrupt. And now that the shade is being drawn back and we're shining a little light into the, roach, the roach's nest, well, watch them scurry, folks. Watch them scurry. It is not clear whether Brazil Post attended the luncheon held after Epstein's membership was revoked in a private or professional capacity. CFR did not respond to DailyMail.com's request for comment. Does it really matter? A professional or personal? See, she's, she's involved with the rest of the scuzzy intelligence folk, right? The foreign affairs people. Durr. The same people that brought you the Arab Spring, the same people... Oh, yeah, you know, I've already went through it all. In his interview with the BBC's Emily Maitlis, Prince Andrew made no mention of the luncheon, at which time he would have been present in Epstein's home, as video shows him in the doorway an hour after Brazil Post left. Again, what this article is doing is proving to you more evidence that Andrew is a the straight up liar folks all right if you don't if you don't believe that by now i don't know what it will take you'd have to be the most the most ardent monarchist to not believe this right now i've gotten emails from several listeners in england and they are none too happy with andrew in fact they're disgusted that was the word used by several of them all right whether he attended the afternoon luncheon is unclear, but Prince Andrew is a known supporter of academics and has met with Nobel Prize winning scientists as part of his official royal duties, according to Manchester Evening News. 
Well, we all know, like I said, that there is a lot of sick academics around Jeffrey Epstein, people that are named in these documents. And that's why it's crucial that these documents are, are released and, and opened up and there's discovery and there's all sorts of things that need to happen so that we can understand the whole entire scope of this. Prince Andrew told the BBC that he had attended a small dinner party at Epstein's home during his two se- December 2010 visit. Maitlist asked, he threw a party to celebrate his release and you were invited as the guest of honor. He replied, no, I didn't go. Oh, in 2010, there certainly wasn't a, wasn't a party to celebrate his release in December because it was a small dinner party. There were only eight or, eight or ten of us, I think, at the dinner. If there was a party, then I'd know nothing about that. So you're staying at his house, but you know nothing about a party? This guy is such a f- liar. At 3.46 p.m. on December 6, Zach Ocella arrived at the property. Zach Ocella, 32, is a Latvian-born model who was signed to the New York Model Management. She took part in a campaign for Victoria's Secret, the company owned by Epstein's only known financial client, Les Wexner. Do you think it's just a coincidence, folks, that his name keeps popping up in all of this? Or do you think that he deserves some scrutiny? In 2015, she married longtime boyfriend Justin Edson, 41, a diplomat for the United Nations and son of hotel, of hotel owner Bernard Edson, in a lavish four-day ceremony in Florence, Italy. Among the guests were Lindsay Lohan, singer Craig David, and British aristocrat Edward Spencer Churchill, according to, to Tatler. Edson filed for an uncontested divorce from Zaccacella in February 2017, according to the New York Post. Zaccacella told the DailyMail.com that she was introduced to Epstein by her agent, John Luke Brunel, at MC2, who had close ties to the financier. Oh, you know who else works for MC2? Pretty funny. Rachel Chandler works for MC2. MC2, the company run by Jean-Luc Brunel. Hmm, funny how all these people are connected, isn't it? She had not moved to the U.S. and was around... She had not long moved to the U.S. and was around 21 years old when Epstein att- when she attended the, the afternoon luncheon at Epstein's home on December 6, 2010. Sacacella said that she, that she had been invited to a small party with other models around her age from her agency and said that there were also a number of older people present. So, once again, the agency is being used as a place to provide young girls. Makes you real confident if you're a parent and you have some, you know, a young girl who wants to be a model, right? Send her into that lion's den. She said that she remembered no one being at that party who was younger than herself. If there were models from my agency, they were older than 18 because they wouldn't have been allowed to come to the U.S. if they were younger. Yeah, okay, because MC2 was such an upstanding agency. Meanwhile, Brunel sending Jeffrey Epstein three underage girls as a birthday present. Out of here with this nonsense. She added, there were a couple of Epstein's friends that he knew from somewhere. I remember there was a chef girl who could cook. Well, a chef girl that could cook, huh? Sounds like we're dealing with a real brain scientist here, a real brain surgeon. Well, that's what chefs do. They cook, right? The cover girl said that she made very little conversation, as at the time she barely spoke English. She said that she would not have recognized Prince Andrew and no one was making any introductions at the party. Yeah, okay. So once again, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Under oath. Let's see how brave she is to lie under oath. As she understood it, Zacachella told Daily, Daily, uh, DailyMail.com, everyone was somebody and nobody would tell who, it, who, it, who is who. So everyone's there in secret? What is this, eyes wide open? What are you guys at a Bilderberg meeting? Zaccacella said that she had only met Epstein a few times, once in Paris and once in New York, and didn't know much about him, but had weird vibes about the whole situation. So what is it? There wasn't underage girls, it was just a bunch of people there, or did you have weird vibes? Brunel is accused of providing underage girls to Epstein and of drugging and raping models himself. Brunel denied both of these charges. Another man who's in the wind, who's not nowhere to be found. Where is Jean-Luc Brunel? Zaccacella said that she came to realize that things were not right at Brunel's agency and subsequently moved to a different model agency and went on to have a very successful career, appearing in Vogue, Maxim, and working on campaigns for Dior, Thierry Mugler, and Cartier. All right. She came to realize that things were not right at Brunel's agency, she says. But no one was there underage because the agency wouldn't allow it. This chick is... She better hope they don't put her under oath. She has not been contacted by the FBI, she said, because she barely knew Epstein. I'm following the story now, but I really had no idea, and I'm glad that I left that agency. It's such a dark and terrible thing. I think you know more than than you're letting on here, young lady. At the very least, you see a picture of Andrew. Did you see this man at the party? 
Sacacella and Brazil Post were in Epstein's home at the same time at the, as the Duke of York. At 4.30 p.m. on the same day, a video of Andrew waving to Catherine Keating, the daughter of former Australian Prime Minister Paul Keating, was filmed. The Duke smiles and waves as Miss Keating, dressed in a long black coat with a large black bag over her arm, steps out at the 15-foot fi- 15 high oak doors. As she goes to hail a taxi, Andrew peers furtively af- around the door before disappearing inside. By this point, no fewer than six women and three security officers had been seen arriving or leaving Epstein's house during Andrew's stay. All potential witnesses for the FBI's case. Well, yeah, they sure are. The Duke of York has since admitted it was a mistake to visit the billionaire Playboy's home 17 months after Epstein's release from jail for child sex offenses. The billionaire Playboy? No, the pedophile. Following his resignation from public duties this week, the prince signaled he would speak to FBI detectives investigating Epstein as he readied himself for a subpoena from U.S. lawyers demanding he give evidence under oath. Our new picture could help investigators identify potentially vital new witnesses and establish whether the American pedophile was committing offenses following his release from prison. Of course he was. What do you think, this guy just stopped? Ah, yeah, I'm I'm done. I'm not touching anybody no more. I'm not raping anybody anymore. I'm just, I'm moving on with my life. I've turned a new leaf. That hard time I did in jail really set me straight. They could also help the beleaguered royal clear his name of alleged wrongdoing. A former head of Scotland Yard's Royalty Protection Squad, retired Met Chief uh, Superintendent Di Davies, said agents must now take statements from protection officers who accompanied Prince Andrew during his numerous trips to see the disgraced American financier who died in an apparent suicide in a New York City federal jail. Yeah, I don't know how much I trust those people. More deep state actors. They work for the MI6 probably. Who the hell knows what's going on these days? You can't trust any of these law enforcement officials. Our exclusive pictures also show what are believed to be three male American protection officers. A closer look shows badges worn by U.S. diplomatic security detail. Their role would most likely have been to protect the visiting royal. Why? So my tax dollars are going to protect the royal? Hmm, that's nice. How about no? You want to protect it, you better pony up out of your own pocket there, queen. An eyewitness account describes a total of five protection officers that kept a police distance from Andrew and Epstein as they passed the sea lions attraction at the Central Park Zoo. Somebody should should have pushed them both in. All of them could provide important testimonies for the investigation. Here, with the help of our gallery, including previously unpublished photographs, we set out in detail the comings and goings during the prince's visit nine years ago. We retraced the pair's steps during their infamous Central Park walk, during which Andrew claims he ended their association. Our picture dossier, oh, there's that fancy word, dossier again, includes close-ups of their intense exchange and a new photograph of them on the glamorous design shopping street, Madison Avenue. There is a distinctly frosty atmosphere as the now eighth in line to the throne appears to tap anxiously at his phone while Epstein frowns at his side. Prince Andrew and Epstein seen after leaving the late financier, pedophiles, home in Manhattan at around 2.06 p.m. on December 5th, 2010. The timeline. Thursday, December 2nd, 2010. The prince spent at least five days at Epstein's 21,000 square foot mansion on this occasion. It began with him being a guest of honor at a dinner party organized by New York party planner Peggy Siegel. It was to celebrate Epstein's release from an 18-month prison sentence for having sex with underage girls. No doubt it was an attempt to cleanse Epstein's image and reintegrate him into Manhattan society. Aw, isn't that cute? Those those Manhattan socialites, they really are something, huh? The guest list included film director Woody Allen. Oh, well, what do you know? Katie uh, Katie Couric, then the highest paid female TV TV anchor in America. George Stephanopoulos, a former White House communications director under President Bill Clinton. Comedian Chelsea Handler and TV news host Charlie Rose. So remember that. Next time you hear any of those people calling anyone else disgusting or gross or whatever, just remember who they associate with. Mr. Allen and Mr. Rose have both been accused of sexual misconduct unrelated to the Epstein case. Yeah, no shit. I wonder how many massages those two clowns got over at Epstein's, huh? We all know Woody Allen likes them young. Miss Handler told the New York Times recently that it was just one of those strange nights. Oh, one of those strange nights. Let me ask the audience, have any of you had one of those strange nights where you were hanging out with a bunch of celebrities and political uh, uh, hotshots and royalty and... A pedophile? Have you ever had one of those strange nights? Doubtful. Highly doubt it. 
She said Miss Siegel had not really made clear who was hosting the event, adding, The invitation was positioned as, Do you want to have dinner with Prince Andrew? Nobody cares. Why would you want to go have dinner with Prince Andrew? And once you got there, you wouldn't turn around? You don't Google the address and say, Oh, man, that's, that's, uh, that's Epstein's place. I'm not going there. What are you, crazy? Liar. Chelsea Handler, you're a liar. Another attendee was Eva Anderson Dubin. Oh, go and take a look at the Closer Look podcast for the Dubins, folks. You'll like that one. Then the wife of financier Glenn Dubin, who has been accused of having sex with Epstein's alleged victims, he has strongly denied any wrongdoing. Yeah, I bet you you have, buddy. Another one who's seen no evil, do no evil, speak no evil. Asked by Newsnight interviewer Emily Maitlis about that party, Andrew said, no, I didn't go. Oh, in 2010, there certainly wasn't a party to celebrate his release in December because it was a small dinner party. There were only eight or ten of us, I think, at the dinner. If there was a party, then I'd know nothing about that. Yeah, you're a liar. The party was for Jeffrey Epstein. He had the blackmail on you. He says to you... This is what this is my opinion, by the way, all right? This is how I think it went down. He has the blackmail information on Andrew. He says to Andrew, you're coming to this party because I need you to help me re- reinvent my image. Andrew has no other recourse, right? There's video, there's evidence of him having sex with uh, Virginia Roberts. Remember, this is, this is my speculation, folks, of what happened. All right, so now he has to go to this, this, this party with Epstein no matter what. He knows that it's going to be bad, but what else is he going to do? And now, here we are, Right? Miss Maitlis challenged Andrew, you were invited to that dinner as a guest of honor. He replied, well, I was there, so there was a dinner. I don't think it was quite as you might put it, but yeah, okay, I was there for, I was there at a dinner, yeah. So were you there or weren't you there? All this guy does is lie. He was there because he was being used as the unicorn trophy friend. Rebrand my image, I'll bring George Stephanopoulos, he'll talk nicely about me on TV, ah, that's that's how these people are in my that's how that they're that's what they remind me of a bunch of bumbling fools right how do they get away with this Andrew continued his continued to stay at Epstein's house on Friday December 3rd in the Newsnight interview he downplayed his contact with Epstein actually the truth of it is that I actually only saw him for about uh what the dinner party the walk in the park and probably passing in the passage what does that even mean you know you dudes were cracking beers or whatever it is you high elites drink, right? You guys were drinking, laughing it up, probably getting massages, air quotes. This is what our picture dossier reveals. Sunday, December 5th, 11.30 a.m., Woody Allen and his wife, Soon Yi Previn, are seen leaving the East 71st Street property, the largest residential home in Manhattan. 11.42 a.m., Susan Hamblin, a longtime confidant of Epstein, is seen leaving. She wears a blue puffer jacket and clutches her mobile phone, on, mobile phone to her chest, a black designer bag hooked around her arm. 12.07 p.m., a security guard wearing sunglasses, gray trousers, and a dark jacket, thought to be from the American Diplomatic Security Service, responsible for, for, uh, for protecting visiting foreign dignitaries, arrives at the Epstein home. Around 1.40 p.m., Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein leave the property and head west, entering Central Park on 72nd Street, followed by five guards. Sunday, December 5th, 2010, 11.30 a.m., Woody Allen and his wife, Soon Yi Previn, are seen leaving the Epstein mansion. A witness told the Daily Mail that the protection officers assumed a star-shaped pattern at a distance to give Epstein and Andrew privacy to talk, instead of staying close as they normally would with dignitaries. Yeah, I wonder why. Our pictures show Andrew making a claw-like motion with his hands as if trying to reason with Epstein, who was striding forwards ahead of him. Their body language is striking, suggesting Epstein in dominance and Andrew with a more conciliatory stance. Once again, all leading back to my assumption and and what I'm I'm going on here, what I think truly happened, the the whole blackmail scheme. All right? Their body language is striking, suggesting, suggesting Epstein in a dominance and Andrew with a more conciliatory stance. Hmm. The two men walk south, past the children's playground, and through the Central Park Zoo, where they would have passed the viewing area for sea lions, an unlikely venue for a confidential discussion. They leave the park at 62nd, 62nd Street and head east to Madison Avenue, which they walk up back to 71st Street. Our, fir- our previously unpublished photograph shows them at 2.06 p.m. passing designer fashion store Chloe with Andrew seemingly texting on his phone. 11.42 a.m., Susan Hamblin, a long-term confidant, seen leaving. 12.07 p.m., man wearing dark glasses arrives at Epstein's home. 
Around 2.15 p.m., they arrive home, making their total walk nearly half an hour. By that time, according to Andrew, he had ended their friendship. All right, for those of you who are not aware of what that's called, that's called a walk and talk. In the mafia, that's huge. They were so worried about being bugged and, with, and having listening devices everywhere that they would do a walk and talk so that nobody could pick up what they were saying. And in some cases, they'd go to the ocean and they'd talk as they looked out at the sea. Addressing the conversation in the Newsnight interview, Andrew said, We had an opportunity to go for a walk in the park. Uh, are you courting him? And that was the conversation, coincidentally, that was photographed, which was when I said to him, I said, Look, because of what has happened, I don't think it is appropriate that we should remain in contact. And by mutual agreement, during that walk in the park, we decided that we would park company and I left. I think it was the next day. And to this day, I never had any contact with him from that day forward. Asked by Miss Maitlis how Epstein took it, Andrew said that he was what I would describe as understanding. He added, he didn't go into any great depth in the conversation about what I was, what he was doing, except to say that he'd accepted whatever it was, a plea, a plea bargain, he'd served his time, and he was carrying on with his life, if you see what I mean. You know, Andrew is trying to act like he doesn't know anything about this, right? Playing the dunce. Oh, I don't know, his plea bargain or whatever. I don't know anything about this. And I said, yes, but I'm afraid to say that that's as maybe, but with all the intended scrutiny on me, that then I don't think it's a wise thing to do. Uh, this guy's a bumbling fool. 9.45 p.m. Epstein emerges from the front door with a dark-haired woman who appears to be in her 20s, wearing a black jacket and an orange scarf. Epstein, wearing a white winter jacket with a fur trim, hugs and kisses her as they walk along. Ah, I wonder who that girl is. Monday, December 6th, 12.39 p.m. The first picture of the day shows an older security agent with a dark mustache and slick back graying hair leaving. 2.06 p.m. An unidentified brunette woman leaves in dark glasses. She appears to be in her 20s and wears a black leather jacket, a gray beanie hat, and carries a large black shoulder bag. 2.09 p.m. Another security guard, a younger man with dark hair, enters the home. Monday, December 6, 12.39 p.m. Man believed to be security guard leaves the mansion. 2.06 p.m. A brunette woman carrying a large shoulder bag leaves. 3.11 p.m. A second unidentified woman with long dark hair, seemingly in her 20s, leaves. She wears a red woolen hat and a long gray puffer jacket. She also carries a large black shoulder bag. 3.35 p.m. Valerie Brazil Post, a director with the Council on Foreign Relations, leaves. She wears a white shirt under a dark brown sheepskin coat with fur trim. 3.46 3.40, p.m. The arrival of Victoria's Secret model Lana Zaccocella. Huh, makes sense, huh? They come in waves, so they got the entertainment coming in a little bit later. Got the, you know, the, the dessert coming in. These sick, sick people, man. At some point in the afternoon, Epstein came out of the house in his white winter jacket. His confidant, Miss Hamblin, also came out and spoke to the driver of a waiting Bentley and appeared to ask him for something. She, re she returned to the front door, rang the bell, and as it opened, Sarah Kellen, a longtime Epstein associate who has been accused of recruiting young girls for him, left with a smile to Miss Hamblin. Sarah Kellen needs to be arrested, man. She, her, Maxwell, they're all the same. 2.09 p.m. A dark-haired man believed to be a security guard arrives at the house. 3.11 p.m. A woman in a red hat carrying a large shoulder bag leaves. 4.30 p.m. This is when the now infamous video of Andrew cheerily waving to Catherine Keating, the daughter of, of former prime, uh, Australian Prime Minister Paul Keating, was filmed. The Duke smiles and waves as Miss Keating, dressed in a long black coat with a large black bag over her arm, steps out of the, fi out of the 15 foot high oak doors. As she goes to hail a taxi, Andrew peers around the door before disappearing inside. By this point, no fewer than six women and three security guards are seen. Excuse me. By this point, no fewer than six women and three security officers had been seen arriving or leaving Epstein's house during Andrew's stay. All potential witnesses for the FBI case. Newsnight's Emily Maitlis challenged Andrew about whether she, he saw any suspicious activity. During that time, those few days, witnesses say that they saw many young girls coming and going. There is video footage of Epstein accompanied by young girls, and you were there staying in his house, catching up with friends. Andrew said, I never, I mean, if there were, if there were then, I wasn't at a party. I don't even, it's like when you read it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It sounds like a man who doesn't even have a third grade education. I never, I mean, if there were, then I wasn't a party to any of that. I never saw them. I mean, I were, I mean, I mean, I mean. You have to understand that his house, I described it more as almost as a railway station, if you know what I mean. No, we don't know what you mean. In the sense that there were people coming in and out of the house all the time. What they were doing and why they were there, I had nothing to do with. So I'm afraid I can't make any comment on that because I really don't know. 
4.30 p.m., Catherine Keating, the daughter of former Australian PM, Australian PM, departs Tuesday, December 7th. A further young female guest was seen leaving the house in the afternoon. Her suitcase were loaded into a waiting car and the tag from her incoming flight could still be seen on them. She apparently came from Russia as the tag said Aeroflot, the Russian national airline, and the date was November 19th. That was apparently intended to be a low-key visit by Prince Andrew to his longtime friend Epstein was blown apart weeks later when the now-defunct News of the World printed a picture of them walking together in Central Park. The circumstances in which the picture was taken, proving beyond any doubt the closeness of their friendship, still puzzles the Duke. He was asked during the BBC interview about suggestions by his friends that Epstein wanted the photo to be taken and perhaps he'd even set it up. Andrew replied again, New information coming out since his suicide has made us re- reappraise that walk in the park. We can't find any evidence, or my staff and my people, and I can't find any evidence to suggest that he was doing anything wrong. I mean, you can look at it in so many different ways. No, you can't. He was raping kids and trafficking them. The fact of the matter is that somebody very cleverly took that photograph. It wasn't as far as I remember, nor do my security people remember, anybody being present or close because there were enough security around. I think you're lying. I think you're lying. And so the the mystery surrounding Andrew's visit to his pedophile friend and the questions over what he told Newsnight continue to deepen. Oh my. All right, and there's a little blurb here. It's The headline is Epstein and the Council on Foreign Relations. Epstein was a member of the Council on Foreign Relations for 15 years from 1995 until 2009 and gave the organization $350,000 over a decade of membership as a top donor, the Washington Post reported in September. It is not clear whether Brazil Post attended the luncheon held after Epstein's membership was revoked from CFR in 2009 in a private or professional capacity. CFR did not respond to Daily Mail's comment request. However, Following his conviction for sex crimes in 2008, council leaders did not discuss what to do about his large donations. I deeply regret that his conviction did not automatically trigger a a review of membership status, Council President Richard Haas, who was also a regular guest commentator on MSNBC's Morning Joe, wrote in a note council members last month, according to the Washington Post. It is unclear what happened to those donations, either at the time of his 2008 conviction in Florida or his arrest this past July for allegedly sexually abusing dozens of girls, some as young as 14. Following the Post story, a CFR spokeswoman said it was examining ways to allocate resources equivalent to Epstein's donations to relevant work, such as our info guide or on modern slavery. Oh, these people are so gross. These are the deep state people, the CFR. These are the people that covered for him, folks. Don't let them BS you. Epstein cultivated a group of brilliant academic minds and spread his wealth through numerous esteemed institutions, including Harvard and MIT. Epstein's membership to CFR was revoked on the basis of non-payment of dues, according to the Post, not due to his conviction for sex crimes. This is now subject to a review by the organization. Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's alleged cohort in procuring underage girls, spoke at a CFR event in 2014 on behalf of her now-shuttered ocean conservation group, Terra Mar. Aw, isn't that nice? More people associating with Ghislaine Maxwell after the fact. So we basically have a list of the scumbags now. It's all starting to come out, folks. And we just have to keep on it. We're going to keep reporting on these scum. And we're going to keep them on the run. We're going to make sure they get exposed. We're going to make sure whatever, whenever these articles come out that we jump on. We do an episode. We do a segment. Because that's what has to happen. These people have to face justice. All right, so with this article, you'll see it bounces around a little bit as I was reading it. So what I suggest you guys do is have the article up while you're while you, oh man, while you're listening to the podcast. That way, you can look at the different pictures and have yourself a reference point. All right, I hope everybody has a great day. I hope you guys had a great day so far. I hope that tonight's just as much fun. If you're going out, please be safe. Drinking and driving, don't do any of that nonsense. If you want to contact me, you can do that at B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at ProtonMail.com, Bobby Capucci at ProtonMail.com. And if you would like to support the show, you can find our GoFundMe link in the description. All right, everybody, I'll be back later on tonight with a daily drop.